have the um, nearly all the pick a park books as well. Okay. Uh, oh, um, the Goosebumps ones. The Goose, uh, Town of Goose. Goosebumps yeah, because we books. inherited um, someone's collection, so yeah. we've got a random pick of all yeah. these. Yeah, oh, it's so great. Like m most of them are fighting fantasy. Um, there's there's a whole ton of um, choose your own adventure ones. We've also got some. Sadly, yeah. we don't have um, you're a shark. Um, <laughs> oh, we've got the ballerina one. Ballerina mystery is amazing. And yeah. I will not have a word spoken against it. Ballerina mystery? Ballerina mystery. Yeah, it's it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm I'm tr both troubled and intrigued by this. Um, okay. It's, um, it's, it's short one. It's short. Like a, a one. Yeah. Uh, and it actually reminds me of one I wanted to ask. Are there plans to extend um, beyond the series that you guys already have to pick up things like, say, the Lone Wolf series? I know that Joe Deaver is already pretty heavily involved in this stuff, but would you guys do like the Joe, the uh, Lone Wolf series or other series of books that aren't the fighting fantasy or your own originals or, you know, are there other ones? The Mark of the Ninja, I think, was another one. I can't remember the name of the series that was from, but... Okay, so this is all the stuff... Um, we have announced at the moment. Um, this blog, which is coming soon. Uh, what else have we got? So, the Fear, Warlock, the Fire Top Mountain is yep. coming soon. There's Firewolf, I see. Okay. Um, lots of notes. Um, oh, it's not there, but To Be or Not To Be is in there as well. Um, which Judge is... Dread, really? Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah that's already out. Um, okay. uh, there's going to be a, a, a second one as well coming. Although, yeah. I still have issues with Judge Dread. Like, I've only seen the movie, so, you know, if anyone has any great comic books for me to start on, that'd be great. Yes. But how do people feed themselves? And if one gang takes over a tower, then... Do not question Dread. I'm not Dread is the law. <laughs> no, no. Why is he the law if someone else can make a different judgment and that be the law? The law is not consistent, and so the populace doesn't know actually what to do because... I there are conflicting laws. I, I just feel constrained to point out that just as you should not judge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by the initial movie, you also can't judge Judge Dredd by a movie that had Sylvester Stallone as its star. It just doesn't... I'm sorry. I don't... Well, I, I saw the latest oh, one. I'm, I'm um, sure I've seen the yeah, first one. Also, I am working on my own... He's um, not accident prone. Ah, my own, fine. Speaking of Ninja Turtles, I'm working on my own. I love game Ninja book. Turtles. Raphael's my favorite because uh, he's the coolest. Oh uh, yes. Actually, what is that? Oh, you have your own that you're working on right now, Ben. Yes, that's correct. That's going to come out through Tin Man. Yeah, um, it is slowly getting there, but I will. Uh, I... I'm going to ask that question in a minute, Zenos. That's a good question. Yeah. So MutantThugs.com. Mutant yeah. thugs with laser guns. Yeah. <laughs> So that's what I'm working on at the moment. Which is a combination of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ballerina Mystery, right? That's... <laughs> Perhaps not Ballerina Mystery. Oh, oh can More. you have an ending where you become a ballerina and you're a pretty, pretty ballerina and you do pirouettes and you really light on your feet? And it would be amazing. I actually did <laughs> ballet for like four years when I was six to ten, and I don't understand how I'm still so clumsy. You're <laughs> able to write your own book. Well then, there we go. Wow, so oh, it just got cold. Um, so, <laughs> so Ben, uh, what is it like? So, I mean, you're doing that. Is that a com are you getting the support of other people on this project, or is it mostly that's that's your own thing that you're just doing? Yeah, so this is, um, it's kind of jug juggling between uh, all the Tin Man stuff and doing this this stuff as well. So okay. it's interesting. <laughs> is it going to be released through Tin Man? Yes. Yeah, okay. Tin Man. Wow, that's yeah. pretty cool, though. Um, how far yeah. away, roughly, would you say you are to getting it out there? I mean, uh, it's a it's a while yet. <laughs> <laughs> not this year, then. Not this year. Not this year. Okay. No, we have a big list of things to get out. Yeah, this year. don't worry. There's more stuff coming out this year, but um, it's not on that just yet. I got you, Cam. Do you have a, a game book that you're uh, secretly working on that you're not telling anyone about? Are uh, you can? No. Well, perhaps you should. Which. Oh, wait, what am I working on at the moment? I'm just kind of doing fear. Oh, you mean, I get yeah. shunted from project to project. I think, I think you know how to make your own. Oh, I don't have yeah. a secret book project yeah. yet. <laughs> I'm going to totally write one. It's no, going to kick um, ass. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be better. Cam is currently working on uh, Cabins of the Snow, well, was Cabins of the Snow Witch, but is now currently fear. Yeah, okay. um, um, then doing we'll go back. Yeah, then we'll go back to probably Snow Witch to finish that off. I was going to make a chronology game. Okay. That was like my idea a couple of years ago, so none of you steal it. Um, because I think <laughs> no. the fact that no one retro cares. phrenology... No one cares about people's ideas. 
Yeah, oh well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I was thinking like a retro phrenology because it's mentioned in Terry Pratchett's like you bash a little minion's head in to the right spot so he gets like little special skills and then runs off in a lemon style game. Yes. Would be like awesome. Also bashing people's heads in with scientific precision to give them skills, not to hurt them. I, I think them. a game book called the Phrenology series would sell like gangbusters. I can't imagine why people wouldn't <laughs> yeah, be all sure. over it. Yeah. <laughs> I love pseudoscience. It's like so fascinating. And people are like, yeah, the bumps on your head meant something. Exactly, exactly. It's fun just seeing some of those old diagrams, uh, you know, from the 1800s of, of, you know, showing the different sections of the head. It was funny. Yeah, um, I've got replicas. It's so awesome. It's and funny. I was on hand with like the palm. The Palmistry, then? Palmistry, I think, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. Mm. Um, okay, Xanos has a question. Would you guys be interested in doing some of these out of non-choose-your-own-adventure books, like the Dresden Files, for instance? Hint, hint, wink, wink. This is where I point out that Xanos loves uh, Jim Butcher and the Dresden Files, and I've, I'm going to be seeing uh, Jim as, uh, as the guest of honor at Gen Con where I do those symposium stuff, so I'm going to be seeing him there, and Xanos already has me giving him, asking him 50 questions. So leave the side that he would like to have Dresden and everything. Is there the chance that you guys would do, the Tin Men would do something outside of the sort of, you know, taking a book that does not have a choose your own adventure focus and essentially turning it into one? Oh, I see. Um, at this stage, probably not. We have like a ton of books um, backlogged. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a ton of, like a ton of work. What What is a ton, roughly speaking, for you guys? I mean, 20, 30? Really, like, you know... It, uh, looking at fear, uh, even even that, even though that's an existing book, it's just changed so much mm -hmm. compared to the original book. It's, um, yeah, there's been a lot more a lot more choice added to it as well. Um, yeah. So, do so, I? No, I do. Okay. So not at this. So not at this stage. No. Um, stage. Sorry. <laughs> so how many books backlog? I would, I'm. I just want. I was curious. Do you do you have a rough guess? We have the book of shame. Oh yeah, it was on our Facebook uh, page. Yeah. Or it was on. Well, well I'm sure it was on Twitter Ben's, as well. Ben's Twitter. Ben's Twitter is usually easy to find. Yeah. Except for all the biscuits I keep baking. Oh, it's Friday. I have to bake biscuits. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need photos. No. Ah. Oh, there you, you go. Can kind of see it. Yeah. yeah. So if we have a look, there's so, more on this. Yeah, that's this is. That one. Oh, whoops, wrong one. That's yeah. personal. That's right, let's try this. Yeah. So all of those yellow um, things on that whiteboard, all those yellow cards on the whiteboard, each one of those is its own book, <laughs> and that older thing. So there's more books now. Yeah, there there are a lot. That's right. Oh, where are they? Two, three, four, five. My goodness. Nine, ten. <laughs> what what is the significance of green versus red um, thumbtacks or whatever that is, uh, oh, yeah. or magnets or? Oh, the magnets. oh, that's nothing. They're they're really nothing. I oh, thought it was like the the green ones are almost done and the red ones no. are. Okay. Oh, it doesn't have my accident counter on it. That's an old photo. One, two, three, I actually five. now have an accident counter on my um, whiteboard days without accident. <laughs> and it goes from zero to one, and then I forget and to update it, so it has a question mark. Except for the time I got bit by the dog, came in, and it changed to zero, and I didn't remember doing that, so I had this huge freak out. Turns out it was him. Oh my goodness. Just from what I can see there, that looks like 55 by a quick count. Um, <laughs> yeah, possibly. That, that's a lot. Uh, <laughs> I'm you can have biscuits. Or if I'm at PAX Prime and I have access to an oven, I will totally bake biscuits. And, and I assume you would find it as sustainable. I mean, like, presumably this is done well enough that they're that you're going to be able to keep producing these, right? I mean, it seems oh, like... That's, that's the plan. Yeah. That's, I know it's the plan. Is, <laughs> is it sort of, from from what you can tell, has that been more or less the way things have gone? I I know this may... I don't want to get you in trouble with uh, with Ben and Neil, but I mean, is it has it basically allowed you guys to get into... Um, uh, do, you, do you feel like there's enough of a good response that's growing that you'll be able to sustain it? Um, yeah, it seems to be, it seems to have been coming along well, so, yeah, it's, it's been good. Yeah. Mm, yeah, um, give us a sec. Give me a sec, yeah. Okay, so, you keep talking. Yeah, it's just, oh, just gonna paste in that. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so, I just went through and found, there was a, a thing on our, our website, which oh, we what? did at the end of last year, which was, um, uh, 12, 12 days of game books around around Christmas time we did and okay. it basically each each day we announced a new um, game book that we were doing okay so um, I think so they're all listed there um, what have I got oh that first one is Lizard King never forget yeah. Mungo yeah. hashtag never forget Mungo yeah 
Lizard King, um, to be or not to be, um, Golden Dragon, Starship Traveler, Zombocalypse, Game Book, more Game Book Adventures, Way of the Tiger was another one. Uh, Jack Striker and Palace Under the yeah, Sea. Yeah, so there's All fast. there's a um, yeah, yeah, so there's a few, few. But that was from Christmas last year, so it's a little bit. Yeah, old. so whether that's yeah. So, and, and when you guys get one of these out, I presume every time a new one gets out, you guys see some kind of bump in sales numbers for all the others, right? Because you, yeah, you well, people that's get right, interested. Cross promotion and all that kind of okay, stuff. So. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Just about that. And uh, yes, they do have their own Twitter, and I think they're answering that right now. How many clock spiders do you have in the office right now, Xanos asked. <laughs> I miss um, a clock thing. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What are clock spiders? We they don't know what a clock spider is. I thought it was some unique Australian thing that they were going to have, be able to answer, and now it turns like oh, not so much. Something else. I mean, we've got the huntsmen, which are like the big ones, the old ones, which are kind of like really pretty because they sit in a cross on their web, and the funnel web spiders, which you shouldn't poke for... We're in preschool, and I was like poking sticks down the tunnels of funnel <laughs> webs. Because I figured a stick is going to bite the stick, not me. So, um, oh, yeah. All right, let's do these Twitter. Oh, I can do one. I want you, Ozzy Ben. Yeah. Just that? Yeah. And Oops. your. Ben yes. Yeah. Um, otherwise, there's also Ben Brisson, who is. I think it's just ben Clock ben. spiders are huntsman spiders? Okay. Oh, huntsmen oh, are, are tiny and cute. Well, they're not tiny, but they're well, cute and the lovely, that... and they eat other spiders to save you. Yeah, they're. they're... Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe I saw one the size of a dinner plate. Oh, yeah, but they don't eat you, so it's okay. It's more the legs because they all spread out. Yeah. <laughs> really, why clock spiders? Interesting. It's the little ones to be careful of, and if they've got a red yeah. stripe or a white stripe, a white, on their thing, white tails run away. are the worst. White yeah. tails are bad because they give you the necro thingy yeah. bacteria. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I have neither heard of neither clock spiders nor huntsman spiders, and that's terrifying. Um, oh, huntsmen's are fine. Huntsmen's not as scary. Yeah, they're just they're easy to spot. <laughs> no, I've, I, yeah, I would I would imagine so. Yes. Um, before I let you guys go, I want to at least try to run into one combat here if I can, and then have us run oh, through yeah. one of those. Oh. So let's see. Uh, a short distance further along the balcony, you arrive at a door with Azil written on the nameplate. All right, chat. In the door. Go into Azil door. Or continue and follow the landing. So, do you want to go into the Aziel door or keep going? I'm just totally going to spam for a bit. Um, what was I up to? Like <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> what do you think, guys? Door with Aziel? Kilobyte says door. Hillness says door. Shadow Mage says door. Mining Miner says door, Xanos says left, because always go left. So that's four votes for door, one vote for left. Anyone else for door or going left? Hmm, going once, going twice, Lego says door. <laughs> Does Kamina have a Twitter as well? Kill wants to yeah, know. Yeah, that's spam more. Spam more. And Rogan says the door, Jedi says the door. Okay, so right. You should try this door. Okay, here we go. Ah, new illustration as well. The door opens and you peer into the room. You quickly check that there is no one inside and are relieved to find it's we empty, but full of clutter. It seems to be a crude scientific laboratory of some sort. A, br a brass telescope points to the window towards the sky. Charts and mathematical tables are pinned to the walls. A human skeleton hangs from a hook and a bench is covered with glass vials and apparatus. They look like priceless antiques and they were all probably made in the last century. Do you wish to investigate the room further or leave? So investigate or leave, guys. By the way, is there a save? I think I know the answer to this, but is there a save system in here? Or there's the bookmark yes. system. But you get yeah. unlimited or three or ten or how many bookmarks do you get? Uh, depends on which game mode you no, choose. No, this one it? has all unlimited. I think. Unlimited for all of them? Yeah. Okay, then. And mine's I'm, hardcore. Yeah. I chose hardcore because, of course. <laughs> right. Um, I, think, I think it's unlimited for all then. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. usually hardcore is only about six. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, investigate, 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 investigate. Loot everything. Okay, yes. I think everyone wants to investigate. That's not a shock. All right. 
You step into the room and close the door behind you. A squeaking noise from one corner makes you jump, but when you walk over, you're relieved to find that the squeaking comes from three rats in a cage. You keep your ears peeled for sounds of visitors as you investigate the contents of the room. Do you wish to look through the drawers? Perhaps you may want to examine the liquids in the glass vials, or you could look through the cupboards. All right, what's it going to be, guys? Drawers, liquids in the glass vials, or cupboards? So drawers, vials, or cupboards? And in answer to the inevitable follow-up question, no, it is not likely you can do all of them. Because choices. <laughs> drawers, vials, or cupboards? <laughs> More brandy, Adam says. Examine the liquids. Yeah, you missed Thanos. There was a whole lot of brandy being consumed earlier on. Uh, liquids, liquids, Pinky Brain and Mickey. Uh, no, what are we going to do, Brain? Take over the world, same as always. Liquids, liquids, drawers, drawers. Uh, we don't know if there's booze in the vials. You have to investigate. Uh, drawers, drawers, drawers. I have one for cupboards. So far, drawers is winning narrowly over liquids. <laughs> I'm just realizing how weird this conversation is. <laughs> it's like lions and tigers and bears. <laughs> oh my, which one do we go? Yay, I do. Cam is a new follower, Hilna says. Cupboards. Uh, let's see. Vials. Wow, this is very close, as usual. Um, so, let's see. Liquids, liquids. Um, liquids. Three for liquids. We've got cupboards, cupboards. And... I think that was all for cupboards. And then I've got drawers, drawers. And drawers. Alright, so I have three drawers. And I have... Uh, so we have a tie between drawers and liquids, guys. So I need someone to break the tie. What's it going to be, chat? Drawers or liquids? Drawers or liquids? Sorry. <laughs> you need some coffee. I I'm actually coffee. really surprised that I've lasted this long. I'm like slowly starting to coast down the coffee crash. Drawers. Okay. Kilobyte says drawers. Drawers it is. In a drawer underneath the bench, you find a few ornate letter openers. Perhaps they're someone's collection. You're particularly interested because they are strong and dagger-like. In fact, they could easily make dangerous weapons. You take one which can be used as a weapon, allowing your skill score to increase to its initial value if used in a fight. All right, so now you have a letter opener. I'm sure that'll work really well in the combat. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly your ears prick up at the sound of footsteps coming closer. You nip into the shadows and wait. The footsteps stop outside the door and you can hear two voices talking. Oi. Hadn't you better ask the master's permission? One asks. Hmm, maybe you're right. Now we better get a light for the lamps. You breathe a sigh of relief as the footsteps disappear off in the direction from which you approach the room. You decide it is best to leave before they return and you open the door into the landing. The safest way to go, it strikes you as away from the two visitors who may return at any moment. Okay, you approach from the left. Follow the landing round until you reach another door on the right-hand side. A nameplate identifies it as the Erasmus Room. Do you wish to enter the Erasmus Room or go to a door at the end of the passageway? What's it going to be, chat? Enter the room or enter the passageway door? I'm trying to get to a combat um, because I want to see you show you guys how the combat system works, which I think is fun. And also the cheating. <laughs> um, uh, enter the room Erasmus or enter the passageway is another door. So, uh, door at the end of the passageway or enter the Erasmus room? Shadow says room. Zeno <laughs> says left. That's not an option this time, Zeno, so I'm sorry to say. Room, room, room. Room, room, five for room. Yeah, uh, see, the typical RPG mindset is you just investigate everything you possibly can. So if you say someone, like, go to a room or go and keep walking, most of the time they'll pick whatever involves looking and exploring more. Enter yeah. the room. Okay. Room side. You grasp the handle and turn it. The door is locked and it looks too sturdy for you for breakdown. Sturdy for you for breakdown. For breakdown. Oh, come on. Aha! Fix that. I have discovered... <laughs> oh wait, I've um, got a so, yeah. section with bugs from Breaking News. The power hey, the power of QA. I wonder, I wonder so, if that's in the original book. Actually, sometimes they're in the original book. Oh that's a good question, actually, yeah. I wonder if you can find what was that? What entry was that? Uh, one forty. Oh no, this one's changed. Oh is it? Yeah. It shouldn't no. It, it says be. two. It say, it says two in the book. Uh, oh, four is an easy typer. <laughs> We have Wasn't discovered me? a break. Complete fail. No, just kidding. No, um, <laughs> there was an amusing one where um, in Appointment with Fear had been mistyped and um, it was a, an elephant had been tied to a snake. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> Rather different. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm helping make the game better. That's right, Jedi. Um, <laughs> let's see. Will you turn towards the door at the end of the corridor or go back the way you came, carrying on past the room from which you originally appeared? Uh -huh. So basically, will you go past the room that you were just in or will you go towards the door at the end of this corridor? Illness, <laughs> there actually is a sad tuba sound, really. Goddamn. Oh, there is. Yes. That is definitely the sad tuba sound. <laughs> it's oh, funny. that was my stomach. <laughs> my stomach's growling. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. We, I, I want to get to this combat and then let you guys go so you can go eat and do your work. Um, but they've been having such a good time with you that, you know. Um, yeah. Awesome. Next on Arv Streams, when games break in front of their developers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Let's maybe we should just do that. We'll just give it the new ones to you, see how they break, and then just go, yeah, we'll totally fix sure. that. If it comes to chat game breaker, we'll be the beta test for it. That'd, that'd be <laughs> great. Uh, bra Let's see. Continue towards the door, towards the door, towards the door, towards the door. Okay. So it looks like everyone's through the door. Oh, my God. Spot 10 fear points? Oh, what? Yeah, by the wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, hold on a second. It said, at the end of the corridor ahead of you is a stout wooden door, blah, 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 blah. I'll read that in a second. You gain one fear point, but the achievement I just got says you gain ten fear points. You might have picked up ten throughout... Oh, no, wait, you have not. Ah, oh, jeez, stop doing this. <laughs> this is my job. Uh, did you play it before? Um, oh, did I play um... it before? I played through enough to go through once, but I didn't get it. I went through, like, two pages, though. I mean, I might have gotten... I don't know. Was there a way I you could have gotten nine the of them? The cumulative achievement. So, like, over the course of the book, get ten fear points. But I mean, definitely. I mean, I with but like separate playthroughs also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I did then. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I did. Well, that was scary. Yeah, I thought I had ten <laughs> ten fear at once. I was like, what? Um, let's see. Who is this person? A faint white figure, a young woman in her early twenties, long flowing hair, dressed in a white bridal dress. Seen better days, ripped and torn. You gain one fear point. Oh, thank God I have found you in time, she says. I must talk to you immediately. Come, let us go into this room. All right, guys, will you follow the um, the obvious ghost into the room? <laughs> will you follow her into the room, or do you suspect a trap and would rather turn back? I mean, she only gave you one fear point, not ten, so... When am I going to fly to Australia for the new QA position? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, Australia's lovely. We've got great coffee. It rains for, like, nine months in Melbourne. Although we did have a week of 40 degrees. What's 40 degrees for you guys? That's pretty hot. 40 degrees Six. Celsius, I think. Well, it went to Fahrenheit. It went to 45 104 degrees. Fahrenheit. 100, yeah. That's what I thought. Wow. Um, looks like most people... Three people want to run, everyone else wants to follow, and uh, welcome in, Midnight Wolf. Uh, for anyone new to the stream, if you like what you see in here, please don't only uh, continue to give your business uh, and time to Tin Man Games and the two wonderful people that I am uh, speaking to, um, who are uh, on the left side of your screen as you watch, uh, Ben Cosmina, lead producer, and on the right, uh, Kamina Vincent, who's the senior game editor and lead QA from Tin Man Games. So you should definitely do that, and if you can follow uh, my stream, that would be much appreciated as well, so I can bring you more of this wonderful type of stuff. Um, that would be delightful. Uh, okay, follower into the room. Of course, Xanos wants to follow because of reasons. Okay, um, so when we go to enter the room, she passes right through the door. You, of course, must use more traditional methods. You turn the handle and walk into the Apollyon room. It is an elegant bedroom. Fine floor-length curtains hang along one wall. An enormous bed with lace coverings is against another wall, and opposite stands a beautiful dressing table with a huge mirror. The woman hovers in the center of the room and bids you to sit down on the bed. Your coming here has been no accident, she starts. And I must warn you of the terrible dangers you will face here. This house is ruled by the Master, a powerful black priest of the night named Kelnor, Earl of Drumer. I would guess that you are to be offered to the demons of Hellfire if you survive that long. In America, you'd be offered to Hades Fire. Yesterday they trapped a girl, a pretty young district nurse who happened to call. She is to be offered tonight. I cannot let this devilry continue. There must be some way it can be stopped. If you can find the Chris Knife, you might be able to defeat Kelnor, for this weapon is his only weakness. Please help me. You will probably find it in... No. Quick, we are discovered. I can hear the hounds. Go, leave this room. You stand up. She was right. You can hear barking getting rapidly closer. She motions to you, pointing at the door. You run to the door and peer outside. Nothing. The barking gets louder and you turn back towards the ghost who seems to be struggling with something. 
She is involved in a fight with two huge ghostly Great Danes which are snapping and clawing at her. You take a step forwards, but it is hopeless. You cannot touch the beasts. And your help would have been very welcome, because the dogs are much too powerful for her. She is weakening, and as she does so, her image fades. Moments later, she disappears completely. Satisfied that their job has been done, the two Great Danes disappear also. You are alone. Well, good job, chat. You just sat around and watched as this poor woman was torn to shreds by these ghostly Great... No, no. Anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so gorgeous. They're all like big and horses, and I could totally ride one to work. Exactly, exactly. How did, how did that work out last time? They were deer hounds. They went great Danes. Oh, God, my story. Why are you uh, just went north of 30 people. Some more people starting coming in. That's wonderful. Um, let's see. Uh, the uh, question from Lego Freak, and I promise, I, I promise you guys again, let me just reiterate when you guys need to leave, please let me know. I don't want to. <laughs> I just want to yeah, keep offering because I feel I bad. Mention, okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, on, we have, we, during our playing of these games on our stream, we have Arv write helpful tips that we encounter throughout the story. Are you going to do that in future games that you design? That's interesting. Um, so, would there, do, is there a hint system that's not just in the mechanics, but in the things to think about in a particular section? You know, perhaps for like a casual mode or something like that? Um, fear. Oh, yeah. It's kind of it's getting kind that. of, kind of getting that way. Um, because I don't know how familiar you are with the point with fear, but um, the way the way that works, it's at key points in the game you've got clues that you've got to find, and you need the right clues to solve the you know solve the thing and get the get the address and all that kind of stuff okay. um, to to get to the meeting. But there's other clues at, throughout the game that um, that are kind of a bit more. Not necessarily solvable, but are yeah, they're kind of like it, it would reminders. Be, yeah, it would be nice to remember this so that um, I, you know, when something like uh, well, for for example, there's one there's one point um, where you hear from from a villain that like um, such a certain character has escaped and he's going to get revenge on his um, on his girlfriend who is a theatre. Um, actress, and she likes to go to use plain plain dressing rooms. So like she not avoids the trappings of fame. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So um, when when you go um, uh, when you go to the theatre later on, it's possible for you to follow follow them to the to the dressing rooms. Um, and there's three choices, and one of them is the plain dressing room. So if you have, you know. Um, because you know you know that clue, you can choose to go to the plain dressing room. Right I away. see, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. So, so you have then, a lot fewer of the completely random choices, which were, frankly, yeah. as much as I love Fighting Fantasy, that was sometimes too much a component of the design, uh, which yeah, was just so completely random, you know, with no way to know. A bit more um, uh, clear as to what's happening. <laughs> right, okay. I see, I see. That's really interesting. I like that sort of embedded stuff. Um, yeah. That's one of the things that Telltale, I think, does pretty well in yeah, providing stuff, embedded clues into these as well. Yeah, the other stuff as well is if you check your adventure sheet, um, you'll notice that there's stuff like things you've learned. Like the butler's name is Franklin. Lord Kilnor is the Earl of Druma. Telephone lines are down in the storm. So like, you know, the the Chris Knight will defeat Kilnor, these kind ah, of things. Ah, very neat. Is that customizable? I mean, is there a way that you could pull out just, I mean, you probably wouldn't need to, you could just do it on a notepad, but is there a way that you could have like a customizable note sheet in here or not? Or is it? Oh, ones that you can add, add your own notes. Correct, correct, um, yeah. Uh, we probably could do that, but um, let's... Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of other stuff that we need to do at the moment, so it probably is not. <laughs> that's that's one of those we could, but why? But but stop giving us things to do. Um, yeah. No, I hear you. Um, I, and I love this little design, by the way, that you, this adventure sheet comes out and it feels, you know, pencil drawn. I mean, it's just I, I yeah. love that. It really fits the dynamic of it. So yeah. Uh, okay, so everyone wants to help this person. Um, you consider your best plan as you walk down the passageway. You turn right along the landing, and two doors are on your left. The yeah, first is a zeal, which you already did this. Exactly. And I'll, see you. I'll see you later. Uh, Ben's I've, going. I've, I've got a lot of, a lot of work on appointment for you to do. So. Totally okay. understandable. Ben, uh, <laughs> thank you so, so much, Ben. I uh, really, no, really nice. appreciate it. Chat, can we get some love for Ben, please? Um, again, thank Ben, thank you, you so much. Before. It was a pleasure, and uh, I will, you know, thank you so much. Thanks I'll so much, Ben. I love fighting. 
So. <laughs> All right, sounds good. So we will. Uh, so Kamina will uh, carry us the rest of the way with the fighting side. Um, but thank you again to Ben. Um, all right, so. All right, as uh, everyone is as everyone is saying goodbye to Ben, as Twitch chat catches up, Ben hype. Thanks, Ben. I'll miss your sexy hair, Ben. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. He does have. <laughs> I'll go pat him later on. I just won't tell him why. Yeah, just he'll be very confused, but you'll say there was a good reason. Uh, all right, chat. So, uh, do you wish to? Up, oh, I got another one. Uh, Kamina, you you may enter the Mephisto room. Oh. You, Wait, you may where, where are you? Oh, we killed the Danes. Did we? Oh, we did help. That's right. Oh, Mephisto, awesome. And it says under the Mephisto choice, it says who may enter. Oh God, guys! <laughs> <sighs> Please stop doing this. I know. I'm sorry. See, now you get. Now you know what it's like to to have people say that to you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm just getting my own back. No, it's all good. Because I always feel really bad when I can't find bugs. I feel like I'm doing my job terribly. It, but you know, it's one of those things. I, I uh, my first novel, I looked through. I, 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 God knows how many times I went through it myself, and a copy editor, and a line editor, and the whole business. And there were still, you know, there's 109,000 109, words, and there were still three or four typos that snuck in. It's just, it's almost impossible to get them all out. So, you know. Yeah. So, you know, you're, the minds of the internet are helping. <laughs> so, yeah. all right. Uh, so you guys can't go into the Aziel room. So you can either enter the Mephisto room or you can walk along to where the landing turns right. So basically go into the Mephisto room or keep going is basically what it is. Yes, I teach literature and creative writing. It's true illness, but <laughs> I, I, am, I am used to it a little bit. But I still make those bugs all the time myself. Aziel. Uh, Aziel is not an option, guys. I'm sorry. We've already been in there. That's sealed off. You see how that's blocked off? So you can either go in the Mephisto room or you can go right. So you basically just have Mephisto as an option. Mephisto, 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 Mephisto. What's up, Call? Good to see you, man. A bunch of Mephistos. And... All right. Uh, looks like Mephisto. The handle turns and the door opens a little, but it is caught on something and will not open any further. Do you wish to try to force the door, chat, or will you leave it and continue along the landing? Will you force the door or keep going? Yeah, it's very funny on this. So what do you guys think? Are you going to force the door or keep on going? The rest of chat catches up with the Mephisto. Yep, so you <laughs> tried it, and now it's... um. So yeah, so force the door or continue? So were you born, uh, Kamina, were you born in Melbourne or were you born uh, or not? I was born in the Blue Mountains. Um, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, you said that. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was really, really great. A uh, lot of bushwalking for family holidays. Mm -hmm. So, essentially, if you need me to walk for eight hours, you just set me on with a backpack and I'm fine. <laughs> um, but, yeah, then I moved to Canberra for uni and then moved down to Melbourne for uni. Now I've got a job here. Yep. So, yay. Very, Melbourne very cool. has coffee. Is this the kind of, of course, everybody wants to force it. That's not a surprise. Um, so did you, is this the kind of thing you always imagined yourself doing or, or something like it? And is it something that you would like to continue to do in some capacity? I mean. Uh, yeah, no, I totally want to keep doing games. Games is now where I'm at. Um, but when I was going to high uni, I thought I was going to be a Japanese teacher. So like teaching English in Japan uh, because my mom's Japanese, my dad, really wanted me to go through with the Japanese and not waste my, what was it, natural ability or something like that. Mm -hmm. Can't remember. Didn't really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, when I was like 12, I wanted to be a war correspondent. So I've been a bit all over the place. I see. You you ended up with a more safe profession, I think, <laughs> uh, ultimately. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But well, safe for the most part. I mean, you know, I understand that you, you, from the way you've described how your life works, it, things don't seem to be safe in general. But uh, you know, <laughs> but um, nothing's happened to me yet is my argument. And most of the guys are like, "Yeah, but if you keep talking to strange people and falling down flights of stairs, something bad is going to happen to you." <laughs> That's true. You're building up a lot of karma that has to be answered at some point. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, let's see. So in this room, you heave the door to your shoulder. It opens a little further. It is small and bare, and a cold, damp wind swirls through it, billowing the curtains. The window pane is smashed, and the floor beneath the window is sodden from the rain. You look around, but there's nothing unusual in the room apart from a frayed length of knotted rope. You take this with you and leave. If you pull the door to, as you pull the door to you, as you pull the door to, you 
Ah, oh, you find a piece of glass. You find a piece of glass wedged underneath it, Maybe which is making sense. Maybe that's where the extra gear went. It just took a walk. Onto a <laughs> it is, exactly. Like a decided to do a walkabout and ended up there. Yep. Uh, you turn left and continue on the landing. All right. You walk up to the two doors in the corner of the balcony. Still looking for a combat here. The one on your left is named Balthus, and the one in front of you has no name. Do you wish to enter the Balthus room, the unnamed room, or ignore the doors and continue round the landing? So Balthus room, other door, which is the unnamed door, or keep going round the landing? You drink a game every time our fronts of the grog you take a shot. Oh my god. <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. Guys, it's before 12. Technically, I have to work today. <laughs> Balthus, Xano says. Eric says mystery room. <laughs> That's what I thought, Eric. I wasn't sure, but let's see. Uh, Balthus, Balthus. Mystery, mystery. Three mystery. One around the landing. Three mystery, one around the landing. And, um... Oh, yes, Balthus Dyer. That's right. <laughs> from uh, Citadel. Unnamed room. Probably going to be some awesome brandy in there. Yes. Yes. If only we knew this was House of Brandy. <laughs> brandy of hell. Do I like brandy? I don't know if I like brandy. So, you know, maybe I won't like this house if it's a house. <laughs> that's true. Uh, that's true. It looks like the unnamed room is going to be the one that wins. We have a couple of four of four, but mystery, yeah, enough people are doing that. So, let's go through the other door. The door opens into a narrow passageway which ends at a window. There's a door halfway along the left-hand side, and a sign on the door identifies it as the Diabolus Room. There we go. So you can either go into the Diabolus Room, you can investigate the window instead, or you can go back through the door and continue along the landing. So what's it going to be? Um, a door halfway along the left-hand side, investigate the window, or go back through the door and continue. What's it going to be, chat? Yeah. Investigate. <laughs> Eric says investigate. Lego says Diabolus. Hellness says investigate. Midnight Wolf says Diabolus. Adam says investigate because Brandy. Xano says investigate. Hellness says the window could lead out. Yeah, it's not a bad argument. Uh, Lakota says window. Uh, let's see. So it looks like we're more in favor of investigate right now. Window. Window. Windows okay. Catch. Yep, window. Sorry, I'm sorry, Cam. You were going to say? Oh, no, I was just like, Windows catching up. I was trying to be a part of it. Yeah, Windows definitely is, uh, has pulled it out. Okay. Curtains are drawn across the window, and you approach cautiously. You gingerly pat the folds in the curtain and are relieved to find nothing there. Although they seem to be safe, you're still on your guard as you draw them apart. As you do so, a thunderclap booms outside and makes you jump. But you are safe. A perfectly ordinary window is uncovered. However, the heavy iron bars on the outside are a little worrying. Just a little bit. Through the window, you can see nothing but the rain running down the pane of glass. But curiously, the rain is... <coughs> Excuse me. Is avoiding one area. Could it be that the wind is blowing the rain away from this one corner? You bend down to take a closer look. Written in the condensation which is formed on the glass is a message. You read three words, Mordana in Abaddon. You repeat this message to yourself and then rub it off the window in case anyone else should see it. This message may be useful to you and you will realize when it is. Well, let's see if the adventure sheet got it. Uh, da -da -da -da. There it is, Mordana in Abaddon. Very cool. I didn't even know that you could scroll this up like this. That's very cool. <laughs> very neat. Okay, now you must head back to the landing and turn left. All right. A short distance further on, you come to the top of the main staircase, which leads downstairs, or downwards. Immediately opposite the staircase is an unmarked door. Do you wish to go downstairs, try the unmarked door, or continue around the landing? So it's interesting, Cam. I imagined having it set up that you can catch the logic of when a room has been explored and can't mm -hmm. be done again. That's that's one of the things I guess you have to check for, is whether yeah. a room is explorable twice. And make sure if you're going through a loop that you're not picking up too many things. That means the rest of it will close off without having yes, that. Yes, yes. It's, like, it's where exactly you pick it up if there's a branch. And, now, do you yeah. keep track of that on paper? Is is that I mean, how do you keep track of those sort of you know logic trees, if you will? Um. um I usually when I'm testing I'll draw a tree if there isn't one already. We do have quite a few of those written down on paper and then scanned into our um, file sharing, which is super helpful because I just have to cross them off and then never have to worry about them again. Okay. Um, yeah, at the moment I have to do one for Firewolf because there's a few tricky things where you pick up something that's necessary but not necessary and it depends on how it goes. Um, I see. So we're still trying to work out that little bit of Firewolf at gotcha. the moment. 
It's, it sounds like that's going to be an interesting one, the Firewolf one. You, you said you liked the story of it, so. Oh, I love the story, especially the bit where um, you come across a woman safe or something like that, and she's like, all right, then bring it, we'll fight. And he's all like, I don't know. And the text actually says, like most barbarians, Firewolf is a misogynistic <laughs> guy. And I'm just like, oh, that's beautiful. Nice. Because, you know, it's kind of like, they are, and I'm not saying I don't love some good barbarian action in a movie sense. Um, but yeah, like it's just that self-awareness that it could be a terrible moment. Sure, 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 it? absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's see, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, knowing what I know of demonology, everything in this game is setting off red flags. Yes, Shadow Mage, I, I think it absolutely should do that. Um, oh, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, the title might be the first clue. That would be the first, exactly, that you were going to be in one of those situations. So it looks like Unmarked Door has gotten the most uh, support. You step into a small storeroom and close the door behind you. There are shelves on the left and right walls on which various household objects are stored. In front of you, in the wall facing the door, is another door. What do you want to do? Will you search through the things on the shelves, try the door opposite, or return to the landing? What's it going to be, guys? You want to search through the things on the shelves, try the door opposite, or return to the landing? And while you're answering that, uh, I will tell you that uh, we are um, happy to be chatting with Kamina Vincent, who's the senior game editor and lead QA from uh, Tin Man Games. Um, she has been kind enough, along with Ben Cosmina, who left just a little while ago, um, to chat with us um, for a couple hours, really, um, as we play through House of Hell um, and uh, talk a little bit about these game books. And we have still um, six of these to give away, so I will do uh, most of them I'll do, I'm sure, when Kamina's off doing her other work but uh but i'll give away one more probably before she goes um so let's see shelves 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 so anyway to finish that thought if uh, you guys like what you see in here please follow the channel and um also make sure to check out uh, the work of tin man games yeah totally we're awesome generally sometimes. shelves shelves, shelves. no it seems like it i see I, i'm you know definitely awesome from what i can tell <laughs> uh all right will you search the things looks like they will Various items of crockery, cutlery, and food are kept in the storeroom, including a sharp meat knife, which you hide under your coat to use as a weapon in the future. Of course you hide under your coat. This sharp knife adds three skill points in a fight. Now, wait a minute. Is that three additional? Like, not bringing you to the norm, but... Three just... for a sharp knife. Sorry, I was got distracted by the chat. No, it's okay. Um, because it says the sharp knife adds three skill points in a fight. And mm -hmm. we already had a letter opener. So the question was, was the three skill points... I see you've got the sharp knife there, but was this the was that bringing you three additional skill points, or? Uh, you can't use both at the same time, so you pick up one, you will drop the other. Looks like I've still got letter opener as my weapon of choice. I see that that's the case. Okay, I see what you're saying. So yeah. even if you drop the one, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, sadly you can't do. And sadly, chat, you cannot dual wield weapons. I don't. I, I, I'm totally appalled by that, but um, you find several cloves of garlic, which you also take. I don't know why you would need garlic in a house like this. There's also an unlabeled bottle of white liquid on another shelf. Do you wish to drink the liquid? Oh boy, I know the answer to this. Or ignore the liquid and try the door at the back of the storeroom, or leave and return to the landing. So, drink the liquid, try the door at the back of the storeroom, or leave and go back to the landing. Hmm, let's see. I'm not a physical book, time to... Why are we trying to get the feel of the physical book? Then, um. So you do want to, yeah, you do want to get, and those those are accurate, right? Those numbers uh, from two um, from the book itself. I mean, they're they're generally the same. They are. Sometimes we change the numbers so it doesn't follow exactly the same number path. Okay. Yeah. I'm not quite sure why they do that, which makes my job sometimes a little bit harder when I write down the section number. But if they've already had the page number scrambler put through, then I'm referring to a completely different section. Right, just more QA to be thinking of all the time. <laughs> it looks like most people want a drink, which is not shocking. Uh, some people are saying, wait a minute, but everyone else is like, let's drink it. You taste the liquid. It is white wine. You drink some more and it warms you. You start to feel a little lightheaded and dizzy. Then suddenly you feel a stab of pain in your stomach and you double over. But there is no relief from this pain because you have drunk poisoned wine. In a few moments you will lose consciousness and in five minutes you will be dead. You will never make tomorrow's appointment after all. The end. GG chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we got to a death before we got to combat. What is wrong with you people? Guys! <laughs> um, you guys oh don't have goodness. a black button, do you? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, because you're playing on hardcore, you don't have a black button, which is, you know my cheating with cheat way of getting through these when I'm doing QA. Oh my goodness. So so technically the way to play would be the medium mode, I guess. Um, I usually play on super casual and then 
do a little extra cheating with my dice rolls. More than the cheating you've been doing, which you can only do in some of the books, I'd like to add. But yeah, if you do free play, you dice roll for, say, your skill, go to the next page, and then go back to your skill, it actually doubles up your skill points with both rolls. I see. Interesting. Um, okay, so then maybe the next time through, I'll try to play this on sort of medium. Sad, no, sad tuba illness. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely so. Well, let's do one last giveaway um, while Kamina's here, and then let us let uh, let us let her get off to her work and, and her real her, her real job, which is not just to sit and chat with uh, with us folks. Um, although she's been very kind to do so. Um, but let's. Um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Kamina. Uh, oh yes, PAX East. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, and, and hopefully there'll be people who will be able to get that. I do a lot of conferences during the year that are not... <laughs> I do so many that I run out of money <laughs> to, to go to the yeah. other ones, but um, but we will see um, about that. I'll let you have the last choice then about which one you'd like it to be. Uh, Assassin or Alond, Infinite Universe, uh, one of those two. Which which one do you think next? Ooh. See, I've only played a little bit of Infinite Universe, and I found it quite interesting, but Assassin's also good. Oh, I can't decide. Infinite. Let's go infinite. Let's go with infinite. All right. So, um, if you guys would like to win the Infinite Universe, and again, this was for PC, uh, Linux, um, for Mac, and for Android. If you guys would like to win this, please type this thing you're about to see in chat. Um... All right. <laughs> Please type in the word booze is bad. All one word. Booze is bad if you're interested in winning. The only one who's not eligible for this is Eric or Hillness. So you two are not eligible because you've already won. Um, but otherwise, if you guys are interested in winning a copy of Infinite Universe, um, which again uh, is courtesy of Tin Man Games, um, then please type in that word. Booze is bad. <laughs> I know, Shadowed. I kept having the Hotel California vibe over and over again. Oh, my God. And pitch champagne on ice. And she said, we are all. Yeah, I loved oh God. it. Sorry, I'm just having a bit of a... There's blue tack on the thing, and I lent my tablet on it. Now there's blue tack on my tablet. Oh, no. <laughs> that won't come off. Oh, this is successful. <laughs> Boo's right. bad, okay. <laughs> All right, my fingers refuse. You must, you must do what you, your your love of booze or your love of games, Anos. You got to go one or the other, man. Well, technically speaking, booze is bad. Yeah, but, but it's a lot of fun sometimes. Let's see. Booze is bad. All right, here we go. Uh, all right, I'm going to stop this giveaway in just a moment. We're going to end this giveaway in just a moment. Um, so, last call. If you are interested in winning a copy of uh, Infinite Universe. Can't be mystery print. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. A little a day is good for you. Yeah, you can get the same benefit from drinking grape juice, though, Xanus. They've discovered it's not about the alcohol part. Your phone is the lower half of the screen shattered. <laughs> nice. All right, here we go. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, that sticky tape holding the glass shards in. Oh, my um, goodness, really? Yeah. Oh, I can reflect on things. Woo! Okay, done now. The winner is Call. Congratulations, Call. You have won a copy, Call, of this uh, of Infinite Universe. Let me go up and find Call. Call, where is Call? Let's find Call. <laughs> hey, type something in chat for me, Call, so I don't have to scroll all the way back up to find you. Congratulations, Call. You have won a copy of Infinite Universe. There he is. All right. Send a user a message. I will do that right now. Okay, and uh, so far it looks like all the uh, codes have been working, but again, please let me know if for some reason it's not working. Or let me know. Hit me up on Twitter or something, and we'll get them sorted out. Wonderful. Um, infinite Universe. 
code. All right, excellent. That's on its way to you. All right, well, then the last thing that I'll ask you before I let you go, uh, Kamina, and mm -hmm. then I will, um, uh, and then chat will take a little bit of a break, and then we'll keep playing ourselves, uh, and uh, I will, I'm going to get some water and stuff like that, but then we'll keep playing this and see if we can actually get further without everyone killing themselves. Um, but I'll ask first. Um, so, Kamina, you, what's your next sort of the, the project that you're most excited to work on? I know you say you've been shunted from project to project, but is there one on the horizon that you see, oh my god, I can't wait to do this book or this, this concept or something like that in your future or not? Um, well, Firewolf is the one I was like super keen to start working on because I knew nothing about it when I did, but to be or not to be because I, I like Shakespeare a lot. So do I. Um, kind of amazing and... Yeah, so to be able to play a choose your own adventure of, I almost said Othello, but I studied that in high school, um, Hamlet, and to be able to play as Ophelia as well is kind of awesome. I you think... can play as Ophelia as well? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty, now I have to check that out. <laughs> There's like little skulls, so you can follow like Hamlet's path the proper way, but I think I ended up becoming a scientist and having a party with like, yeah, a, I was a scientist and then I partied with topless hunks on the beach. So I was okay with that, and Kate Beeson, did from Harker Vagrant did the image for that and it was just I love it was just amazing it was like the perfect end for me that's a really cool concept would you what was that I mean who came up with the concept first do you know like who what what huh? whose idea was that it was written by I can't for the life of me remember his name right now which is terrible of me because I'm a bad person um see the coffee it's not working anymore <laughs> um to be oh that's not gonna come up with anything is it yeah, it was run by a webcomic guy um, who we then got the rights to launch that. And yeah, it's like, it's a while away, but it's looking really awesome. Oh, that sounds that sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like webcomic, it's completely hilarious. And like some, like, of course I became a scientist as a Ophelia with partying with, you know, topless hunks. How is that a bad thing? No, there's nothing bad about that at all. <laughs> but yeah, that's the um, one I'm, for. So that's the super one you're excited about. And I mean, yeah. would you want to see more of the sort of specifically literary type? I mean, could you imagine a, uh, I don't know, a fighting fantasy Jane Austen, you know, go with Darcy or don't, you know, that sort of thing. Could you, that you know? That would be amazing. Yeah. Um, we've actually got the Strange Love series at the moment. We've also got um, Hex Boyfriends and Vampire Boyfriends. Okay. And it kind of follows that like Buffy kind of romance vampire stories and they're really really good i'd like to see more of those happen just because they're very tongue-in-cheek yeah yeah um, and don't follow the twilight sparkly vampire i i'm 400 years old i'm dating a 16 year old girl seriously break up with her she's going to get over it it's, it's, <laughs> it's very true there's some good analysis on why the twilight system works um and it's something about what it says to people that want to believe that a 400 year old vampire would really care about them super much <laughs> yeah um, exactly. but anyway but oh, um, I remember being 16. I was annoying. But yeah, we've got a couple of projects on that board that I'm looking forward to, but they kind of, just putting them to the back of my mind, otherwise I'm not going to focus on getting the ones I've got at the moment. Right, else. you get two, you're right, you're right, you get uh, sort of focused. We've got a lot of work on your plate um, to keep you busy, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but but it's um it, it obviously it's worked out well so far. Kamina, I am so grateful um for you guys sticking around much longer than you had to. I really appreciate it. Um and uh, yeah, please you know if, if something else comes up that we can help promote, uh that uh, Tin Man would like to connect up with us. Um as I say, my friend Dylan Bertolo sort of made the connection having done talked to Tin Man before, and and so thanks also to Neil Renison um who uh, is the guy who first set this up to begin with. But thank you so much, Kamina and Chad. Can we get some love for uh, Kamina, please? Um this was great thank you so much i really appreciate it oh you guys are lovely oh lots of loves wild applause there we go that's what i'm talking about and lots of love and everything please come back we love you <laughs> all right so we'll definitely have a chat later about maybe us coming back that would be that would be lovely but uh, thank you so much Kamina, again and please thank uh, ben for me as well i really appreciate yep, it will do. all right thanks so much thank you very much have a good one all right Cool stuff, guys. Well, that was awesome. Um, and uh, I'm really glad that we were able to make that happen. Give me a second while I get rid of that. Uh, extra window capture. There we go. Um, yeah. So uh, thank you guys so much. And uh, it was our pleasure. I'm glad we were able to do it. And uh, yeah, um, that was great, guys. Uh, these interviews have all gone really, really well. Um, and uh, it's been uh, it's been great so far um, doing this. So 
Good stuff. Okay, now, guys, um, I am uh, hungry and thirsty and all those sorts of things, so I need nourishment. <laughs> so I need to take like a 10-minute break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take a 10-minute break, um, and uh, then when I get back, uh, we will do another giveaway, because um, I still have five more of these to give away, because they were super generous. So I have another giveaway that I will do when I get back, and then we will get back into this, and we'll see this time if we can actually survive and not die from drinking way too much wine. Um, oh, thank you, Hillness. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad the interview went well, that you guys liked it. Thank you, Lego. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It's, uh, interviews are always very easy when the people involved in the interview, the interviewee, are, you know, generous people that, that, you know, are having fun as well. And I think, um, you know, they seem very, like, pleasant, nice people. And also, just on a general note, I just love Australians. Australians are just awesome. Like, honestly, I can't remember the last time I met an Australian that I didn't like. <laughs> I just think Australians are amazing, awesome people, and it's an incredible country. So, anyway, it's cool stuff, um, and uh, thank you again so much, Kamina. Um, have fun breaking stuff, and uh, ho sorry that we had to find a few other things to break um, in, in the book, but thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, uh, Alright, off we go. Um, I am now going to take my break. Um, I will be back in about, um, like I say, about 10 minutes, so bear with me. Uh, and uh, if someone comes in, please they'll tell them what's going on. As soon as I get back, we'll do a giveaway, and then we'll continue with the game. Okay? Hold tight. I'll see you guys in 10.
All right. <clears throat> there we go. I am back. Yes, again, uh, thank you, Ben, so much um, for uh, popping on with us because, again, I really, really appreciated it. Okay. All right, chat. I am back. I managed to consume, uh, stuff my face with some meatloaf. I had to take out the trash and recycling, let me tell you. So I had to do both of those. And now I'm going to conclude as we're playing. I'm going to be doing this. I want to show you guys two things. Um, wait, did I miss something? New follower, welcome. Oh, Tin Man followed? Okay. <laughs> um, oh, thank you very much, Ben. Thank you very much, Tin Man Games, for being a follower. I'm honored. Welcome to the Arvanauts. I am honored to have you folks on board. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, again, I will send them another email later thanking them, but uh, so many thanks to Neil Renison and the Tin Man folks uh, uh, for doing this. This is great. And for the giveaways. And uh, Oh, now Kamina's got it back. <laughs> or is it? Or isn't it? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to be doing one more giveaway, but I do want to show you guys quickly what I went for um, the dessert part. You can both type. <laughs> Who is in control? Oh, that's awesome, Xanos. Congratulations, man. Harris broke the ice. Is our first donation. Awesome, dude. That's good. I see. I just clicked on it. I see you guys have $50. That Awesome, dude. That first donation's a big one to kind of get you on the way. Awesome, man. That's great. Okay. Now. Um, so I'm just going to show you guys what I'm going to be enjoying as we eat this. That, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is now a broken, <laughs> a broken oatmeal cookie. Homemade oatmeal cookie. And what do I have here, you ask? A dark chocolate covered almond. Two dark chocolate covered almonds and a homemade oatmeal cookie. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Yes, yeah, so welcome back in Ten Man as we uh, do this. So um, now uh, let us uh, let us get that giveaway. So again, chat, we are doing a giveaway here. Um, this is our uh, fourth giveaway of eight. Um, so we're going to give away the one that we haven't given away yet, and that's the first of the um, Game Book Adventures, the first original one, I believe, um, that was done by uh, Tin Man Games, and that is An Assassin in Orland, and I've played this, and it was good. Um, so I highly recommend this. So this is a giveaway. Now, this thing that you guys are going to get is going to work in um, PC, it's going to work in Linux, it's going to work in Mac, and it's going to work in Android. It won't work in iOS, but everything else it will work in. Um, and so, um, this is uh, so that's the deal with that. Um, and let me put up what the giveaway is going to be. Now, again, the people who cannot contribute, the people who cannot participate in this are Eric or Hillness or Call, because all three of those people have one tonight, but everybody else can. So let's see. Um, let's see. Um, what's a good one for this one? Um... Gonna make you guys work for this one. There you go. If you are interested in winning an assassin in Orland, please type in smoking jacket. If you guys are interested in winning um, a, an, an assassin in Orland. And again, the only ones not eligible for this are Eric, Hillness, and um, Call, because they have already won um, copies of these books. While you guys are doing that, I'm going to eat me a bite of my oatmeal cookie. <laughs> right? No booze is bad. This oatmeal cookie. You guys have seen that um, YouTube clip, right? Of the guy doing the Five Guys burger review. 
and you guys have seen the auto-tune version of that, where the guy's like, damn, 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 that one, that's what this is like. I wish you could eat what I'm eating. This oatmeal is perfect. You know, no, and you know it. Damn, damn, damn. That's what this is like. Yes, I probably should have specified that uh, Tin Man games cannot win their own game. That would seem fairly clear. That's exactly it, Shadow. Hey, hey, what's up, Killer J? What's going on, man? <clears throat> oh my god, this video- you guys haven't seen the video of Dam? Oh my gosh, I have to play just- I'll just play a little bit of it off YouTube. I'll just play a little bit of it. I did not see your Vader collection, no man. And, uh, uh, Killa J, if you're interested in winning this game book, please enter now. Is this it, Sod? Um, just type in Smoking Jacket. God, do I love that song. It's so funny. It's so good. It's just so good. It's auto-tune when auto-tune is good. Occasionally, auto-tune can be used for good. Ooh! Look at that, guys. Ballerina Mystery. Uh, you just type in, um, Killa J, just type in Smoking Jacket. Yeah, what Xanos just said. Um... That's awesome. The Ballerina Mystery Pick-A-Path. And they made that specially. They, they made that picture just for us, chat. That's pretty sweet. Thank you, guys. That's awesome, guys. Look at that picture. Ballerina Mystery. That looks badass. That actually looks like something my daughter would love. There you go. You're all good, Killa. That looks like something my daughter would be all over. My daughter is already doing this thing called uh, Little Wizards that I play with her sometimes, which is like a, um, this kind of like role-playing game for kids. And she's really into it. I mean, she's my kid, so she's gonna like games. I mean, it's just bottom line. 
But um, that's pretty cool. I like the fact that, that Ben is so pumped up about this, though, uh, Cam. I like that Ben is like, oh my god, the ballerina mystery is so amazing. That's pretty sweet. A Cliff's Notes version of Ballerina Mystery? Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Okay. And the winner. It worked! Boom, shakalaka! <laughs> He's like, am I in? Yes, you're in. All right, Killer J. I'm going to send this to you right now. Congratulations. So you have won a copy of An Assassin in Orlande, which is a game book like this. But you can play it on PC. Uh, you can play it on PC. You can play it on Android. Uh, you can play it on Mac or Linux. Glog would be happy about that. So hold on a second. I am sending it on their way. Just got in. That's what works. That's what works. But he's not a first-time viewer. I mean, he's been here before. Um, but Killer's been here before, but this is definitely a, uh, a new one for that. There you go. Hang on a second here. Okay, cool. All right. Hey, hey, what's up, Durbin? No, no problem. You still got four left. Welcome back in. So it's there for Android. You guys can decide. And again, this is all courtesy to the very, very kind people um, at, uh, at Tin Man Games. Um, the very kind people at Tin Man Games who gave us, uh, who have given us this stuff. And we've still got four left to give out. I still got four left. So um, fear not because there are more on the way. All right. <clears throat> no, this is not the end of the cast. No, it is not. Uh, let us try. We're going to get back into this chat, and we're going to see what we can do. Yes, check your Twitch inbox. I just sent it to you, Killa. <laughs> I just sent it to you, Killa J. All right. Um, here we go. We are now going to uh, play this through, and this time we're going to see if we can do it without causing problems. No more hardcore mode. Okay. So, again, three difficulty settings, and this time we're not going to do hardcore. We are going to do the second mode, medium mode. Starting stamina is calculated by rolling 2d6 plus 24. Um, let's see, maximum fear value is calculated by rolling 1d6 plus 9. No skill penalty at the beginning of the adventure. The thing that sucks about that thing we just did is that our scores were pretty good. You guys just consumed some stuff and that was that. So medium mode. So here we go. We're going to start with skill. Skill is... Nope. There you go. 10. 10 skill. Now our stamina. Stamina is... I like that. 34 stamina. My god, a base of 24. And luck? Luck is... No. There you go. 12 luck. There's those hacks. And finally, your fear. Yeah! 15. Check out those stats, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You got a Marvel Unlimited account? Oh, cool, man. Well, it's been working well in your stream, man. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so now I can actually read this from the beginning. And hello to everyone who's just come in. Uh, hello to Zar Dragoon as well. Apologies, guys, for eating on cast, but um, I had literally not eaten for hours. And I was like, I better get me some nourishment, so... No, you can't save, Rogan. It's hardcore. It's roguelike. You know what I'm saying? So you did not save. That's okay, though, because this time around, you'll be able to do things, and this time we'll have bookmarks and stuff, so. It was like, real life, we die, we just respawn. Exactly. Give me one second while I finish up these bites. Alright. 
Alright, I can get rid of this. Nope. There we go. What's up, dragon? I've been on, but I'm not leaving yet. <clears throat> oh, nothing. You just missed a really awesome interview. You played this twice and you died a lot. I know, Killer J, I know. House of Hell is brutal. Absolutely brutal. Uh, I can move it to the right. I don't remember why. Oh, you know why I'm not, actually, Adam? This is why I'm not. Because of this. You see that? That's why I'm leaving chat on the left. Now. Whoa, what? Why do I have a zero stat? Oh, wait, I know why. I know why I have a zero stat. Because I don't have any fear yet. And so far, I haven't lost any stamina. 12-12, so here we go. Um, so that's why, Adam. You see what I'm saying? Because that goes into the right. So that's why I'm putting chat on the left this time. Was my thought. It's also, by the way, why I have my webcam a little smaller... Normally, I would have it higher, but I, I checked it last night, and it's right below this bottom line of the book. <laughs> no, no, not, not a genius, man. I just had a chance to check this out a little bit. All right, here we go. <clears throat> now I'm feeling nourished. I'm feeling energetic, and we can uh, move on here. Here we go. <clears throat> Right. <clears throat> the rain spatters the windscreen relentlessly. You can see no more than a watery gloom as you strain forwards over the steering wheel to see the road ahead. Although the wipers flap valiantly, they are fighting a losing battle as the rain drives harder and harder. Your foot eases off the accelerator. The headlights struggle to light up the road. Damn. You curse the white-haired old man who sent you off along this bumpy track. Probably he meant the second turning on the left, or even a right turning. The old fool. Perhaps this is idea of a joke. After all, didn't you notice a mischievous glint in his eye? Something vaguely sinister? But what sort of nonsense is this? So you've taken a wrong turn and got caught in a downpour in the night. The rain will ease off soon. It can't possibly keep up this deluge for long. And then you'll be able to- Watch out! You spin the wheel frantically to the left to avoid the figure who, from nowhere, shows up in the headlights. The car bumps and jolts as it bounces over the rocky roadside and thumps into a ditch. You collect your thoughts. You are unhurt but shaken. Then you remember what has happened. The body. You must have hit the figure which appeared. There was no way you could have avoided him. You spring out of the car, praying that he is still alive. Your clothes soak up the rain as you hobble back to the road. In the darkness, it is difficult to see anything, but there is no sign of a body. You consider the situation. Are you certain that it was someone and not a trick of the light? Yes. You can remember the arms held up in fright as the car collided and the look of anguish on his face. His face. There's something familiar about that face. A man you recognized. An old man with white hair. Your heart leaps. No, impossible. With a shiver of fear, you race back to the car, jump inside, force the key into the ignition, and twist it violently. The starter coughs, splutters, and dies. You hit the key again, but this time a single shutter is all the engine can manage. You grasp the wheel with your hands and shake it desperately as if to force some life into the car. But the battery is dead. Your car is certainly not budging from the ditch tonight. Your situation is hopeless, but now the plight of your car is paramount. Where can you get help? You passed a garage at Mingleford, but that was some 20 miles away. As if in answer, a light appears in the distance. Someone has switched on a bedroom light. What a stroke of luck. It was at least 15 miles back that you passed the last house, and you happen to have broken down just a short distance from someone's home. You button up your coat and open the door. From outside the car, you can see the building more clearly. Just ahead, on the left, a drive winds up to a large house. It is a good five minutes away, and by the time you reach it, you will be drenched. But how else can you call the garage? You can't afford to miss tomorrow's appointment. No, go you must. Anyway, you'll probably be able to dry off inside, phoning the garage. You slam the door, turn up your collar, and set off for the house. A flash of lightning lights it up clearly for you, but, in your preoccupation with the rain, the warning from above is wasted on you. The house is old very old, and in a shocking state of repair. The light in the window is flickering, most likely an oil lamp, certainly not electric, and you don't notice the fact that might have turned you back anyway. There is no telephone line going to the house. As you climb the steps to the front door, 
Little do you realize what fate has in store with you. Little do you realize what fate has in store for you. Tonight is going to be a night to remember. It's astounding. Time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll. But listen closely. Not for very much longer. I've got to keep control. I remember doing the crime war, drinking those moments when the blackness would hit me and a voice would be calling. Two, three, four, let's do the time warp again. Oh, yeah. Warp again. It's just a turn to the left. It's just a jump to the left. And then a step to the right. Keep your hands on your hips. Let's do the time warp again. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh fun times fun times sorry I, I just felt the need Ooh, that's the retro look cool just felt the need peoples just felt the need <laughs> Ooh, wait you can change the font options Ooh, can you really fancy ancient serif eh. fancy eh. Ancient. There you go. Okay. I dig it. <laughs> ah, good times. Yeah, I've seen uh, Rocky Horror a few times. The way you're supposed to see it, which is live. It was pretty fun. It's amazing how bad that movie is and therefore how good it is. <laughs> no Comic Sans, no. All right. I may have to go back to that several times. <laughs> the song is just too good. Oh, goodness. You climb the creaking steps up to the front door. What happened to my music? Where's my music, peoples? There we go. You climb the creaking steps up to the front door and pause to catch your breath. Even though you ran all the way up the drive from the car, you were soaked through. Your feet are particularly wet. Judging by the number of puddles you stepped into in the dark, the drive needs a small fortune spending on repairs. But under the porch, you were out of the storm, and you brushed the rain from your clothes before turning towards the door. Wait a minute. Something doesn't seem right about that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, let's see. The rain is still pelting down, but an eerie silence hangs in the air. No lights are on downstairs. You step back off the porch to check the upstairs window which attracted your attention earlier. Nothing. No lights. The whole place seems to be deserted. But then you remember the time. Five minutes to midnight. Everyone in the house has probably gone to bed. An owl hoots in the distance and a shiver runs down your spine. The situation is a little scary. Here you are in the middle of nowhere at some strange run-down old house about to wake up whatever lives inside at midnight. They certainly won't be too pleased. But you have no choice if you're going to make your appointment tomorrow. You must reach a telephone to call for help. You step up to the front door. From the left-hand side of the house, a dull glow catches your attention. A light has been turned on. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least someone is awake. You consider your options. There is an elaborate knocker in the middle of the door and a bell pole hanging down to the right. Now, for this one, I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pull up the sorcery project. And I'm just going to use the poles thing. There we go. I'm just going to use the poles thing. Bear with me for just a second. And let me window capture that. There we go. 
All right. If uh, Kameen is still watching, this is the system that we normally use, um, which is a system that was designed for me by one of uh, my wonderful viewers. Um, and so this is the system that normally we use to kind of decide these things, and it goes a lot faster than just trying to count things out in chat. So, um, with that said, okay, uh, let us do, uh, what we need to do here. So, will you wrap the door with a knocker? Pull the cord. What's it going to be, guys? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Sod. All right, what's it going to be? Wrap the door with a knocker, pull the cord, or creep around the house to investigate? What's up, Graydon? Welcome in, man. Pull the cord. We have creep, creep. Oh, and then the video cut out. Oh, no. Wrap. Cord. Cord. Creep. Cord. Creep. Cord, cord. I was just saying that this system that we have here in place um, is designed to make it a little bit easier to handle these polls and these questions. I do have a polling system in chat as well, but it doesn't, it's not as well suited to something like this. It's not graphical, so that's basically the idea. Wrap the door with a knocker. Did you already vote, Adam, or no? All right. So we have six votes for pull the cord, four votes for creep around the house to investigate, two for wrap the door with a knocker. Going once, going twice. All right, pull the cord it is. You grasp the rope and pull. From the depth, see a call. Thanks for stopping by, man. You grasp the roll and pull. From the depths of the house, you hear a tinkling noise and the light from the side window goes out. A few moments later, the door handle turns slowly and the door opens. Standing in the doorway is a tall man dressed in a dark suit with tails. His long face is solemn. Yes, he asks indignantly. You smile nervously and explain your situation. Your car is broken down, you need to reach a telephone, and you are soaked to the skin. Oh, yeah, sorry, Tin Man. Sorry, uh, Kamina, assuming that's you, uh, or possibly Ben. The only hope is if I get the transcoder. Um, sometimes uh, the transcoder in Twitch basically allows you to pick source choices. So you can either choose source, which is what I'm streaming at, or you can choose a lower bandwidth option. So sometimes that helps people. They can choose it at, like, mobile or low option. Um, so, anyway, hopefully that will happen. And I don't know if any of that got through, but if not, maybe chat will explain. Uh, the man's face remains expressionless. Come in, he orders. The master is expecting you. Follow me. He leads you into a reception hall and tells you to sit down while he informs his master of your arrival. You sit down in a solid carved chair and look around. The reception hall is certainly not what you would have expected from the outside. It is elegantly decorated with rich tapestries and fine oak panels. A number of portraits line the walls. A sturdy 16th century table is set against one wall. Will you wait for your host to arrive? Study the paintings? Or hunt for a telephone? What's it going to be, guys? Wait, study the paintings, or hunt for a telephone? Haha, <laughs> that'll be funny, Tim. That'll be funny. Paintings, paintings, Killis's weight. Paintings, paintings, <laughs> paintings, paintings. One, two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six for paintings. Seven for paintings. I have one for weight. Lakotis is hunt for telephone. Xanos is hunt for telephone. Uh, eight for paintings. Also, let me know, guys, if the music is okay relative to my voice. If my, if the volume and everything sounds good. Alright, eight to two. Looks pretty strongly like we're going to be studying the paintings. Three portraits are particularly interesting, and at this point, I think I'm going to throw in a bookmark. Your position has been saved. Alright. Well, be careful, Killa. Try not to, uh, try not to, like... 
how do I put it? Do the best you can not to lead people too much in chat, if you know what I mean. Like, don't don't spoil it too much for the rest of us. I know, um, but if you never tried the paintings, that's good. But try not to spoil it too much just for those who haven't tried it, that's all, because most people have not. I did a long time ago, and it was brutal, but... Okay, will you look at a beautiful young woman wearing a tiara? Uh, will you look at... Actually, wasn't, uh, wasn't Kamina wearing a tiara today? Kamina, were you wearing a tiara, I thought? <laughs> uh, so you could either do that. Look at a middle-aged, portly gentleman wearing half-moon glasses, or look at an elderly woman with gray hair and a cold expression. And the beautiful woman, of course. He says... Killa says, old woman. Graydon says, elderly woman. Lego says, gentleman. Xeno says, tiara. Dragon says, tiara. What's up, dragon? Wolf says, tiara. Um, elderly woman, because she wants to drink with you. Oh, wait. I missed... Somehow, I like just missed a bunch of tiaras. Let me count those up again. Tiara, 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 Tiara. Four Tiaras. Moon, Tiara, Boomerang. I'll assume that's a Tiara vote, Czar. Lakota says Elderly Woman. Alright, let's see. Five votes for a woman wearing Tiara. Four votes for an elderly woman with gray hair. One vote for a portly gentleman wearing glasses. Ah, Xenos. Okay, five to four to one. Any other votes? Any other votes? Going once. Going twice. And Xanos is actually a chef, so um, brunch is covered. Okay, so the vote is for the woman wearing the tiara. A plaque beneath the painting reads Lady Margaret of Danvers, 1802 to 1834. You stand and admire her beauty and wonder why she died so young. As you are staring at her face, you suddenly blink and look again. Didn't you just see her lips moving? Surely not. A whisper reaches your ears, but you cannot make out its messages. Its message. You lean forward and put your ear to the lips. A soft woman's voice is speaking to you. Stranger, beware of this place, for it is cursed. Many have succumbed to its power, myself included. The evil Lord Kelnor will already be plotting your death. Drink not his white wine, or if you can, be gone. Escape while you may. You step back, aghast. What sort of place is this? A creepy, run-down building filled with priceless antiques and paintings which talk? A cold prickle runs down your neck and you gain one fear point. Will you now run for the door? Or will you wait to see what happens? <laughs> wait. Rogan says run. Midnight Wolf says wait. Graydon says wait. Lego Freak says something bizarre. Lego says wait. 